Hello, hello, Jenna here. This morning, it's absolutely beautiful here in the UK. However, it's very windy, so I thought that I would come and sit in my car. So that way, hopefully, you'll be able to hear everything I'm saying. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about taking care of ourselves taking care of yourself um, because I think with everything that we face on a daily basis and coupled with everything that we face in our external reality those things that are almost bombarding our senses because even if we choose not to engage actively, there will always be people in our lives who confront us with the, the narratives and their feelings, their opinions, their energies. And I think, well, <laughs> from a personal um, perspective, I have faced many challenges over the past six months, um, which when they go unrecognized or when I, when I try to persevere and keep pushing forwards, you know, trying to make, make it through the day, they tend to they tend to come to a head and then there is an explosion of emotion and energy um, which is fine you know release is what we want we want to release everything we do not want to keep things trapped but I think there are better ways of doing things than to allow everything to build up um, there are better uses of our time and energy so that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about today. Giving yourself permission to be okay with taking time for yourself before things get too bad, before you have a breakdown, before you have an emotional outburst and you take it out on somebody else or you feel like you desperately can't cope. You become desperate. You become broken mentally. And I think it's easier to, to become this than you might think. You know, it just takes a few life events to kind of happen, you know, whether they're in quick succession or whether there is a gap between. If they're not dealt with, then that pressure just builds and builds and it has to come out. Um, so basically, this is what's happened with me this morning. <laughs> um, and I'm very aware that, you know, what I'm experiencing I'm not alone. Um, I'm a human human being. I'm not perfect by any means. Um, and I know that I could deal with things better. And it's not my place to, you know, tell anyone how they should be dealing with things. Um, but I do have a responsibility or I feel like I have a calling to talk about how my experiences make me feel and what I'm learning from those experiences and potentially how what I'm learning can help others. So I'm going to talk quite openly and frankly about those experiences because I feel that if they can help at least one other person, then it's worth it. Um, I also, this morning, um, got this visual, this visualization of ascension. So, you know, the basic understanding that most of us have is that we are working to ascend through the physical existence that we're experiencing. Um, 
to a state of enlightenment. And I think that, you know, what enlightenment is, is completely different for everybody. Um, but basically, it's increasing our vibrations. Um, filling our entirety with a vibration of love and coming from a place of love. Um, and I know this is, <laughs> it's not an easy task on a daily basis or even, you know, a minute by minute basis sometimes. But that's the goal, you know, to, to become masterful, to get better at doing this. So if we consider that and then we consider shadow work, it is logical that if we do not do shadow work, if we do not confront any darkness within us. Now this could be, you know, making a, a judgment about somebody that we have in our lives or that we pass on the street to something more extreme, like, you know, a life event that we've been through that has caused a lot of emotional pain and damage. If we don't deal with these things, if we don't confront them, if we don't acknowledge them, you know, moment by moment, if possible, then this builds up within us. And then that build up is a weight. And it gets in the way of light. It's taking up the space that could be filled with light and with love. So the more of this that we have within us, the more we are carrying around with us the longer it takes for us to keep moving forwards, to keep filling up our cup with light, in essence. Um, and it gets to a point where the heaviness gets so extreme that it explodes like a volcano. And then you have an emotional outburst, a bit like I had this morning. Um, which, you know, was necessary for me because there was a lot of tension that I needed to release from my body, um, to release from my, my emotional fields. But there are better ways of doing things. So I think that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about. Now I know from who I am as a person who I've always been, I've always been fiercely independent and consider myself strong you know, to carry burdens that I may experience, you know, as a result of being a mother or being a child or a partner or, you know, a colleague or an employee, you know, all of these different things, all of these aspects of who we are, we all are these things to people, you know, we, we embody various versions of ourselves daily. We're not just one version. We are... <sighs> I don't know how to put this really because I don't want it to sound like we separate ourselves, but I suppose we do, in a sense, do that. We have to be in multiple places mentally on a daily basis. And in those multiple places, we are accumulating um, many things but that has the potential to be an accumulation of baggage or an accumulation of light and love. So it's just worth bearing that in mind as you're moving through the day. And I think it needs to become essential really that we get to the end of the day and we really are evaluating, closing down in essence, you know, like you would close down a computer allowing everything to kind of just unwrap, to deal with, you know, all of the, <laughs> all of the tabs that are open, you know, to really sit with those feelings, to take time for ourselves. Now, I am a mother and I am self-employed. Um, I know exactly how hard it is to make time for this stuff, which is exactly why <laughs> I had a bit of a breakdown this morning. Um, but I think it is more imperative to really, even if you have to just squeeze in the time at the end of the day, even if you're really tired, just make the time. 
to process everything that you have experienced throughout the day. Because even just showing acknowledgement on something that has occurred is showing it light. It clears away the heaviness and the darkness just to acknowledge, okay, I went through this today. I felt this emotion. Do I still feel that emotion? I'm not sure. Go into your body. I think this is, this is a big problem in our world. We've become so disassociated from complete and full embodiment. <clears throat> We're always in our heads. We're always overthinking. We don't feel into our body and that's when there becomes a problem because when we don't deal with the emotions, when we don't deal with the, the mental, this manifests in our body. And this, you know, this could be from something as seemingly insignificant as a cold, or it could be something more significant, like something that happened with me this week. So, I just feel that we need to become good, um, proficient <laughs> at being okay with saying to ourselves, I am going to give myself what I need before it comes to a point where we have to give ourselves what we need. And <laughs> this is something that I think most of us are horrendous at. Most of us are horrendous at, and it's because it's programmed into us. You know, even from the youngest of ages, going to school, okay, you wake up and you feel awful. You don't feel very well. And your parents say to you, oh, well, you need to go to school. You got to go to school because I've got to go to work or you can't miss school because such and such. And I understand that from a parental perspective. I genuinely do. But obviously over time, this responsibility of having to keep pushing forward, it just becomes ingrained within us. You know, so we move from school and then it's university, perhaps, you know, where you've got to hand your assignments in and it's got to be done by this date. It doesn't matter if you're really sick or whatever, or you're employed and then you you get the flu or something, but you've got all these deadlines and you've got people who rely on you and your boss is, has all this expectation that you need to be in work. You need to be doing this, you need to be doing that. So you put yourself second in place of the needs of others because you feel obligated. So this really is ingrained. And then obviously as a parent, you do put yourself second because it's necessary most of the time for your children. However, the thing is, if you do not allow yourself to come first, at some point in the day, you run on empty. You have nothing left to give and then you are no good to anyone. So with the best of intentions, you know, for your family, for your children, there's nothing left. There is nothing left for them. And if there's nothing left for them, there won't be anything left for other aspects of your life, other compartmentalized versions of yourself that you give to other areas of your life, like, you know, other family members or your colleagues or your job or your school or whatever it is that you're doing because you are drained. So ultimately, this is what you want to try and avoid, getting to a point where you've got nothing left. But to do that, it means that you have to be okay with saying, I am going to put myself first. I am going to acknowledge everything that I am feeling. Now, I know that the idea of shadow isn't everybody's favorite subject. You know, the idea of confronting that which is potentially very painful 
is understandably difficult, particularly for some people, depending on what they've been through in their lives. However, it is necessary to shine the light on those aspects of yourself. Every day, if you can. See, Ascension is about growing in awareness, growing in awareness of who and what you are and what you are becoming. You are changing from second to second. You are experiencing a completely new reality from second to second. That's about becoming completely conscious in the moment, spending as much time in the moment as you can. And it, be it can become so easy to just put yourself on autopilot because there is so much to get through, so much to handle every single day that you just stop being in the moment and it's not even a conscious thing. So a big aspect of ascension is just to become mindful of where your, <laughs> where your mind is. You know, where is your body? You know, it's inserted in, you know, this co these coordinate systems of space and time. But where is it really? You know, where is your mind? Is it, is it embodied within your physical body? Or is your mind somewhere else and your body somewhere else? Is there separation there? See, I was considering ascension this morning and considering year on year on year on year as we move forwards and it, it felt to me like it, it's kind of like um, the levels of a video game you know you, you move up a level and then you complete those tasks and you move up a level and you complete those tasks but as you're moving up a level it becomes more difficult there are more difficult challenges to face and to overcome. And that's exactly what Ascension is. It's not all going to be cupcakes and rainbows. It's not going to be, you know, dancing around stone circles and experiencing pure bliss all of the time. But the more energy you put into facing those challenges that you have, the more that you will experience those blissful moments, the, the easier it will become to move through those difficult challenges because you have the skill set. Your skill set increases with every challenge that you face. If you face them, if you sweep everything under the carpet, you're not growing, you're just growing heavier. You're not experiencing the richness that comes from those challenges now we can we can view challenge as shadow and shadow as challenge but there is always something good to come out of challenge it's kind of like dark rich fertilizer you know it helps flowers grow and that's exactly what it's doing you know, by the time you reach the end of your life, you could be wisdom. You could be the full embodiment of wisdom. Or you could be the opposite. You could be heavy, full of pain and regret. And you will take that with you. I don't want that for myself and I, I certainly don't want that for anybody else. So I really felt compelled this morning to talk about this because it's something that affects everybody. And I think it's become so obvious to me that challenges are not going to get easier. You know, with every new year that comes, yes, we might be approaching you know, that, that golden year of 2032. Um, 
where it's predicted that those who are going to ascend will, will be in that fifth dimensional energy, it will, it will get more challenging. And that's not something to be afraid of, because if you are in a place of sovereignty and mastery, then those challenges are just water off a duck's back. They're not going to be easy. There is never going to be an easy year. You know, there won't necessarily be an easy month. We will all have challenges every single day. That is part of the human experience. But we don't need to be afraid of those challenges. We don't need to live in fear of those things that may or may not happen. All we can do is work on ourselves. That is all we can ever do. If every single person in the world did that, then the world would be a better place. There is no point placing hope in anyone else to change. By being that which you want to see in the world, it gives other people permission to do the same. So give yourself permission <laughs> and then others around you will follow because they will see the difference in you. They will see you lighten up, they will see you become brighter. They will see that you have more energy. They will see that you have more for others. They will see you living your best life. Because that's all everybody truly wants. But that means breaking down some of the programming, or all of the programming, in fact. Because the chances are a lot of who you've become has been as a result of programming. It's not needed. But change is a real conscious effort. It's a real, um, it's a real task every day to keep halting yourself if you feel that, I don't know, that you're slipping. But it's doable. It's just about becoming conscious. So I feel that this year there will be more challenges. And I feel that there will be more earth and natural challenges, weather challenges. I don't want to use the word disasters, but natural weather events that may cause the world to open their eyes and look and listen. But this is exactly what's happening within the collective, within the individual. As within, as without. We are allowing a build up to occur within, within all of us. And then we have these little breakdowns, these little explosions. This is what Gaia is doing. She is a mirror for us all. She is trying to cleanse herself of all that pain, of all that doesn't serve her. So if you truly want to help the world, help Gaia, help your fellow humanity, you need to help yourself first. It's not selfish to put yourself first. That's a real, it's a word with a very real negative connotation. You are here having your experience. You are not here to have an experience for other people. I think that's just something that everybody probably needs to hear. your life, your experience. Make it a good one. Okay.
I'm not sure I have much more to say. <laughs> it's uh, approaching 25 minutes now. I think it's really important to acknowledge that there is no perfect person. There is most certainly no perfect individual within the spiritual community or within, you know, a position of spiritual teaching or guidance. We are all just making our way through the best we can and learning the best we can from our own experiences. Just remember there is so much richness in every experience that we have. You do not need to be perfect. There is no such thing. Just be conscious and live your best life. Follow your excitement, follow your joy. Your joy is where you are heading. It's your compass. And it's much easier to follow your joy if you're not burdened with unacknowledged or buried pain. Anyway, I think that is all for now. <laughs> um, I really hope that you found something useful from this video. And... I wish you all a really, really beautiful day. Really beautiful. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. That almost sounds like Sesame Street. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> anyway, have a good one. So much love to you. Bye.